Hello and welcome to the in new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Diveri and in this segment today we are going to discuss about federalism. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains papers. So let's begin with the topics of discussion step by step. We will start with the news and we will cover with the issues. What are the issues? What is the concept of federalism? The challenges related the way forward and in the last of the segment I am going to ask your main spaced question for answer writing practice. So let's begin with the news. Now this news piece is saying spirit of federalism lies in consultation. That means if we truly have to be a federal country, we should take into account the opinion and reservations of the states as well. So recently lots of issues have come to the fore. It has actually shown the deep fault lines in the certain legislations of the central government which did not take into account the opinions of the state. We will discover all those acts in detail. So, the issues related is because of rising unilateralism. What is unilateralism? That means unilaterally without taking into account the apprehensions, the opinions and suggestions of any other person and change the status quo. That is unilateralism keep that in mind and there have been certain unilateral decisions made by the central government which did not go down well with the states supposedly if we talk about kerala kerala legislative assembly unanimously passed a resolution against the electricity amendment bill of 2020 why because this amendment wants to establish a national authority for having a say in the electricity rules and regulation of the states. Right now, as we talk about it, the electricity comes actually in the concurrent list. That is true. That is Article 38. But the problem here lies that already states have a say in the electricity regulation through their own state electricity regulatory commissions. But now if a national authority will be there, of course, there will be centralization of electricity. Against, if we talk about against the farm laws, Tamil Nadu and many other states, not only Tamil Nadu, they are not happy with the farm laws because farm laws under Article 33 of the concurrent list in the, state, in the seventh schedule, it's talked about the farm laws under trade and commerce, but actually, under Article 14 itself, agriculture comes under the ambit of the states. So, here again. Now, we will talk about how the disputes are taken into consideration by the Supreme Court. But again, just see, because the union government, the central government did not take into account the possible outcomes of these farm laws, did not talk about it to the farmers as well as the states. We can see highly, they are highly flammable that are the protests that are going on right now by the farmers. Again, new draft Indian Ports Bill. Right now, if we talk about the Indian Ports Act of 1908, it administers the non-major ports. The non-major ports come under the ambit of the state government. Now, again, this particular bill wants to establish a national authority to centralize the non-major ports and it was protested against by the BJP governed Goa state as well. So you can see what is happening right now in the state in the country is not in the true spirit of federalism. So let's move on and talk about what is federalism. A polity is either federal or unitary. That means federal means having coordination cooperation and division of powers with respect to the union government and the state government. Again, unitary is a government which has all the powers to legislate, execute as well as implement any change, anything in its own hand that is unitary. So, India is a very different country. We cannot say that India is either unitary or it is Federal. It is quasi federal. Can you tell me who called India a case sui generi in the common segment? Let's move on. And it means both the center and the state. Federalism, if we talk about 
both have their own division of power both have their own sphere of control both have their own list that is the under the seventh schedule article 246 they have their own list right that is why it is being said that india is a quasi federal country but if we talk about federalism federalism is a basic part it's a part of the basic structure of the indian constitution according to the sr bombay case and state of west bengal versus union of india in 1962 it was said by the supreme court that india is not a federal country but that was that was reversed actually in sr bombay case only india was considered as a federal country okay and according to this this particular case the supreme court said that states are not mere appendages of the union they can work in their own spheres it also said that india india has as a union government if we talk about has a lot of powers but the legislative powers of the state are given from 245 to 254 of the article articles indian federation it differs from the usa right again if we talk about how is it different india can admit new states under article 2nd and india can alter the boundary create new state or as well change the name of a state under article 3 and states have no say or even if they have their say is not at par with the center again if we talk about center here i mean is parliament okay again seven schedule of the constitution that of course has the list the three list and can you tell me how many subjects are there in the state list union list and concurrent list in the comment segment so here if we talk about the resolution of, of disputes between anything that happens non federal in nature that is covered by doctrine of pith and substance okay doctrine of pith and substance so it says that if any segment any subject is largely covered by one list and touches upon the other list only incidentally that means if there is any subject it is given in one list suppose concurrent list and the changes in it if it is done by the center the changes in it only impacts up to a very minimal level to any other subject in the state list then that law is legitimate it is constitutional it is not unconstitutional it means the essence okay essence of the entire legislation again doctrine of colorable legislation it talks about that what cannot be done directly it also cannot be done indirectly okay if the union government cannot change the matter with respect to any stateless subject it cannot do it indirectly as well and again this tests the competence of the legislature against an enacted law whatever law has been enacted it tests the competence of the legislature was the legislature competent enough to directly or indirectly change the essence of that entire legislation of that subject let's move forward and talk about the challenges fiscal challenges especially with respect to gst it has actually put a challenge before the states to not have their say in the fiscal fiscal stuff and that is something which is causing harm to the federal structure again legislative and institutional interference if through legislation as i talked about certain legislations done in the past by the government if they have their own institutions through their legislations to encroach upon the rights of the states that is another challenge again if we talk about the way forward there is always a way forward a constituent assembly did have this fear that through the concurrent list it may happen that there could be the high handedness of the union government this was taken into account but there were certain commissions especially sarkaria commission and the venkata chaliya commission those commissions did talk about having coordination between the states in order to reach to any conclusion so that the enacted laws have a healthy it has a healthy balance of debate and also 
more and more minds could come together to reach a law which is beneficial for all. So, Sarkaria Commission did say that and we require a proper balance between the pillars of federalism as it is a part of the basic structure of the constitution. So, national integration plus the federalism with respect to the concurrent list and the division of power between the states. It should go hand in hand. An interstate council under the article 263, this should be given utmost importance because until and unless there will be proper discussion, healthy debates going on, such particular protests such as the farmers protests, this will rise, these protests will rise and become more frequent. Again, we need reforms at the institutional as well as the political level. Any institution should have a federal structure so that the position of the state as well as the center is actually portrayed in a healthy manner. Also, political level can deepen at the roots of federalism in India, especially with respect to, we can say about Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog should be structured not only on paper, but also on ground in such a manner that the say of the states are equally important as that of the center. So that's it for today. Let's move on to our means question. Okay. Discuss the challenges with respect to federalism in India and also suggest the way forward into 50 words. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated. And thank you so much for watching.